Thank you, Fanula. And welcome everyone. Today I'm covering a non-fiction in quite a mixed bag of history, textiles, design, psychiatry, espionage, sport and ecology. So I hope there will be something for everyone. The first book that I'm covering is by Cassia Sinclair called The Golden Thread. I actually read her other book first, The Secret Lives of Colour, which is also worth reading. It's an extraordinary book covering colours that often no longer exist, um, but she looks at where they come from, how they were made, um, which artists used them and why they were eventually abandoned. The Golden Thread looks at how fabric changed history. Um, the book has been on the best of lists um, of many newspapers and magazines, and um, it's such a good read. Both of the books, the books that I wanted to have in my reference library, so I bought them. Fabrics really tell the story of human development from the prehistoric world to the space age, and Cassia Sinclair tracks the development of textiles over this period of time. Um, she looks at essential fabrics that have been spun, knitted and woven through the ages, from traces of thread that have been discovered in Neolithic caves, um, to what are effectively multi-layered one-person spaceships worn by American astronauts. In ancient Egypt, for example, flax was harvested, beaten and combed into a laborious process to produce fibre that was woven into linen, a fabric that became essential for trade, for clothing and mummification. Just as linen was associated with Egypt, silk was associated by, with China and became a lucrative Chinese export. In the stratified society of medieval and Renaissance Europe, where clothing defined who you were, what you did and your social status, lace, for example, signified wealth and power. Sinclair stresses the importance of cotton to 19th century America's economy, as well as its connection to slavery. And the book is vibrant, entertaining, and brightly informative. This is the list of contents. Um, you can see she picks up various aspects of um, history. She looks at um, extreme sport clothing, record breaking sports fabrics um, and harnessing spider silk. I'm going to pick up on two of those which I found particularly interesting. One chapter was devoted to the wool of the sails of Viking ships. And yes, it was woven wool. It's estimated that the wool of at least 400 sheep were required to provide enough wool to fully equip one typical Viking vessel with all the textiles needed for their journey, including clothes, blankets and sails. So by these estimates, to equip a fleet required nearly 2 million sheep. This is a sail islet that's been found in a fragment of woolen um, sail, carbon dated to 1280 to 1420. And I want you to notice the ochre bands in the sails of um, a replica Viking ship. The sheep that the Viking shepherded were a unique variety that provided a much hardier wool for the Viking use. Uh, the breed is found on the Viking islands, including Iceland, Norway, the Faroe Islands and some Scottish islands, because they were, they were uh, highly adaptable to harsh conditions, such as small grazing lands and cold, damp weather. In some islands, they actually grazed on seaweed. Their sheep were well suited to providing wool that could be used for sailcloths because they had dual wool layers, a coarse outer layer with a high lanolin content for waterproofing and a soft insulating undercoat. After spinning, weaving and fulling, the final step would have been to coat the sailcloths 
in horse fat or fish oil and ochre, hence the red colour of Viking sails. And together, the two would act as a waterproofing sealant in which the oil or fat would add a smoothing layer of water repellent and clay would plug any remaining gaps in the weave. The entire process from wool collection to a finished sailcloth took approximately two years to complete. And to prepare all of the sails and supplies for a typical Viking vessel would take 10 years, but when cared for properly could last upwards of 50 years. So were they extremely long lived. One chapter covers a golden cape that is woven from the silk of 1.2 million golden orb spiders. This richly embroidered garment, its yellow hue is actually the natural color of spider silk, is the result of a seven year project on the Indian Ocean Island of Madagascar. Using long poles, a team of 80 people worked to collect the spiders from their webs each day harvested their silk before returning them to the wild. The project was the brainchild of Simon Pierce and Nicholas Godley, an art historian and textile expert respectively, who had both lived in Madagascar for many years. They just wanted to prove that it could be done and to create two items that would help revive traditional Malagasy weaving techniques and embroidery skills and to showcase the talents of the people working on the island. The cape is covered with images of spiders. You can see the golden orb spider here. Plants and flowers, which took 6,000 hours to embroider. And if you're lucky enough to get up close to it, it was exhibited at the v &A in London some years ago. Um, you will find that it's virtually weightless. It's an immensely um, strong material, almost entirely made of protein and capable of stretching up to 40% of its relaxed length without breaking. But of course, the expense of producing it has made it prohibitive. The book is full of interesting um, tidbits like this. It's the kind of thing that you can dip into and dip out of, um, and I would recommend it highly for any.